We're live. Welcome to our panel this afternoon on audits, standards, and certifications on accessibility. I'm Tom Butcher of the Zero Project and your on-the-ground host here in Vienna. But all the hard work is going to be done by your chair, Christopher Lee, back in the US and all his panelists. Chris is a managing director of the International Association of Accessibility Professionals, IAAP, a division of GC3, G3 ICT. As you'll know, G3 ICT monitors the progress of digital accessibility around the world through research conducted by advocates through an initiative called the Digital Accessibility Rights Evaluation Index, or the DARE Index. Before handing over to um, Christopher, however, I should warn you that both he and I are strict timekeepers. Um, to the extent sometimes of being rather rude. But if we don't stick to our allotted times, someone will miss out on presenting their work, and we really don't want that. And when it comes to questions, if there is time, we shall keep these right the way to the end. And once again, in the interest of time, just questions, not statements. So, um, oh, just one more thing. If you have a presentation and it's being controlled from here, and I think most of them are being controlled from here, um, could you say really loudly and clearly, next slide, please? Um, because then my colleagues um, on the tech side will be able to flip the slides for you. So, Christopher, without further ado, over to you. Uh, thank you, Thomas. Um, it is. Great to be here. I am sad, like I'm sure my other virtual folks here that will not be alive in Vienna. It's been two years. It's been way too long. And um, from what I've seen so far, the conference has been just a huge success. So Zero Project team, you know, hats off, great job. And um, I'm really excited today to be here to chair the, this um, session on audits, standards, certifications on accessibility. That's a very broad range of topics that we have to cover in 55 minutes. So we're going to be real strict on time, um, making sure that Yuval, who's our last speaker, does get to speak. And see, I've got your back, Yuval. <laughs> um, anyway, so we're going to jump right into it. Um, I just to, to as, as Thomas said, I'm at G3 ICT, and uh, we do monitor um, how standards and policy um, especially the digital area, are being handled through governments around the globe. And it's something we call the Dale Index, which is somewhat of a report card um, from advocates around the globe. So if you do um, want to see the information about that, do go to the G3ICT website um, and, um, and, and check that out. Anyway, with that being said, I'm going to bring on our first um, group, which is from um, um, Site Sabers. And they are a award E of Zero Projects, so congratulations. So Andre and Sabine, do you want to come in? Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Chris. Um, and thanks a lot for having us here. Um, my name is Andrea Pregel. I'm a global technical lead for inclusive health at Sightsavers. I am a um, white young man with short hair, wearing a suit and a, and a tie. And my pronouns are he, him, and I am an ally. Um, can I have the slides, please? Thank you. Next slide, please. So Science Service is an international NGO uh, working to promote disability rights um, across over 30 countries. And in many of these countries, we do have um, uh, programs aimed at improving access to healthcare for persons with disabilities and improving their health outcomes. Um, and um, every time we design a new project working with OPDs, Organizations of Persons with Disabilities, uh, every time the lack of accessibility within health facilities is highlighted as a, as a major issue. Um, next slide, please. So, next slide. So we decided to develop a toolkit um, to basically conduct accessibility audits of existing health facilities and to support the renovation process. Now, 
where do you know, national standards do exist? Very often they're quite complex, they're not very practical to assess existing health facilities. So our goal was really to um, design, you know, to strike the right balance between developing a comprehensive set of tools, but at the same time keeping them simple so that they could be used by people with no prior experience in, in the accessibility field. Um, so we developed an initial draft, we tested it in, in Mozambique with local OPDs, we refined it later on in other countries, and the result is this box that's uh, standing next to me here. Next slide, please. Uh, now, the toolkit includes several resources. First of all, there's an accessibility standards manual, which is divided into 12 chapters. They're all color-coded. They focus on different components of a health facility. Um, and there's a lot of diagrams and visual information to make it as simple as possible. We try to incorporate recommendations on the barriers experienced by people with different types of impairments. So it's not just about staircases and, and, and ramps. Um, and, uh, and then there's a checklist, which is the most important tool during the audit process. So what we do normally is we, um, we, I, you know, we, we, we assemble a team of you know, five to ten people, including people with different types of impairments, as well as representatives of the healthcare sector, because ownership is important. Um, and then we train them, we plan the audits together, and they go out in the field and they conduct the assessments. And after the audits, they compile a report using some of the other tools in, in the toolkit. Um, they, they develop an action plan and a budget. And then through that process, they go through a prioritization exercise to identify the most urgent renovations which are um, needed. Um, and uh, by the way, we also have a, a, a digital version of the toolkit, which actually is the one we've used the most over the past few years, and it's freely available online. You can download it for free on um, sciservice.org slash accessibility dash standards. Uh, next slide, please. So we launched the toolkit in 2018. So far, we have trained over 250 people, including OPD members and representatives of government agencies. We have conducted accessibility audits in 53 hospitals across Bangladesh, Ghana, Malawi, Mozambique, Nigeria, Pakistan, Tanzania, Uganda, and Zambia. And we have completed accessibility renovations in 16 of these hospitals. Uh, next slide, please. And as part of our um, Inclusive Futures program, which is the flagship disability inclusion program of the UK Foreign, Commonwealth, and Development Office, uh, which is managed by Site Service, we have developed an alternative version of the toolkit, more focusing on the broader um, built environment. And uh, we've used this to audit the Parliament House in Pakistan, the uh, British High Commission in Kenya, and companies like Safaricom and, and Guinness. And also this version is a tool of the toolkit is available for free and you can download it on the Inclusive Futures website. So I'll now pass to uh, my colleague Selbin who will briefly talk about one of our projects in Nigeria. Thank you. Next slide, please. Thank you, Andrea. My name is Selbin Penzin and I'm the Senior Program Manager for Eye Health in the Nigeria Country Office for Sight Savers. In Nigeria, we have several inclusive health projects, one of which is the COVID-19 intervention project we conducted in, we executed in Abuja, Nigeria. It was a short project that lasted between July to December 2020 at the peak of the pandemic. We worked with the Nigerian government led by the Assistant Chief Quantity Surveyor in Abuja, and we also had the participation of a disability consultant who worked with us on the um, project. We worked, we identified four health facilities who, which um, were isolation and treatment centers for COVID-19. We conducted an online accessibility audit training for the first time in Nigeria and since then replicated the online training in other parts of the um, world where we work. We were able to complete renovations in two of these facilities and made recommendations to the government to complete the um, renovations in two of the facility, other facilities. Next slide, please. Um, so, like Andrea has mentioned before, in, at Site Savers, we have supported different governments to complete renovations in 16 hospitals across four different countries. And now we are very happy to say that countries like Malawi, um, Pakistan, and Uganda are incorporating disability standards at the very basis of their um, hospital constructions now. In Nigeria, what we are doing is um, modifying already existing structures and our 
um, quantity surveyor has made the observation that it is really most, much more cost effective to um, develop buildings at the scratch with disability standards than um, altering them when they have already been constructed now. And I'm very happy to say that in Nigeria, we, um, the National Disability Commission is adopting the disability standards which we have developed in Site Savers to um, uh, develop um, national disability standards for Nigeria. It uh, has gone through its first draft completion and we're hoping that by next month we'll be able to validate that and put it to use. That's something that we're looking forward to at Site Savers. Next slide, please. And for us, looking forward, we are hoping that we'll expand our um, scope and have more countries and more, multiple projects in more countries adopting this new um, toolkits and standards which we are using. And we are also looking forward to having massive open online courses which will be targeted at construction and, and structural engineers, teaching them the methodologies and the benefits of using accessibility standards in all their work as they go along. We are also open to collaborations from anyone, so please feel free to reach out to us for collaboration in um, using the toolkits now. And you can also download the toolkits on our website. Thank you very much. Great. Andrea, Selvin, thank you very much indeed. Christopher, over to you. Thank you, Thomas. Um, that was an excellent presentation. I have so many questions um, to ask, but we're going to save those to the end, and hopefully we'll have time to do that. If not, I'm going to reach out to both of y'all. Um, excellent work. So next, um, I'm going to turn it over to a, a colleague and friend, Shelby Kapoor. She's the founder of um, Barrier Break, and I've known Shelby for years. She's brilliant. So go for it, Shelby. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, I'm missing being at Zero Project today. So, uh, you know, I, I just seeing the stage there right now made me nostalgic to the time that I was there. So hopefully next year to Martin and team. Um, so let's just dive in. You know, Christopher was kind enough to invite me to the session. And uh, I wanted to talk to you about uh, digital accessibility at scale specifically in you know, the software as a service model. Today, all of us are seeing the concept of SaaS, uh, you know, where so many technologies are now in the cloud, and we are all trying to access this cloud, and a lot of it is inaccessible. Right? Uh, all of us are struggling to get uh, digital technology companies to accept and buy in to accessibility as a, not as a feature which is, we might have, but something that they should have and that they should consider right from the start. So my own organization is Barrier Break. We are a leading accessibility consulting firm. And I'm just going to walk you through what we've been trying to do so as to shift the needle on audit standards and certification, but move it to beyond compliance per se. So next slide, please. So, just as a simple point, you know, whenever we talk about digital accessibility at scale, one of the biggest challenges that we find world over is that most of the teams are two people, five people, 10 people teams that are trying to do audits and supporting technology companies to shift the needle. And we're seeing this globally. Uh, it is not about India, it's not about Israel, but it's everywhere we seem to see the same story. And there is this concept that there is a dearth of, disability, of accessibility professionals in the world. And there's actually a crisis like WebAIM wrote about. So we need to look at how do we shift the needle if we really want to do audits uh, and certification at scale. So what we did at Barrier Break is firstly, we adopted a people first approach, whereby we ensured that people with disabilities are a part of the process. So our own team of 260 accessibility experts has about 60% people with disabilities as a part of it, right? That's a huge number to have at scale. Uh, 260 accessibility experts and where we have such a major crisis that's happening to make this happen. And people ask me, how did you go about doing this? And we really looked at the strength of training people and building skill set along the way, whether it was for software testers that we took on, software developers, or then, um, you know, even just UI designers, 
for people with disabilities. So I think one of the things that all of us have to realize that if we really want to take audits and certification to scale, we're going to have to build capacity. And without capacity, we're not going to be able to deliver on this promise beyond uh, you know, a few websites or a few applications that are accessible. It was also critical in this journey of us that we shifted the conversation from compliance to inclusion. Because initially when we started, everybody would just come to us when there was a requirement for compliance. And we needed to move that conversation to inclusion. I must say that though the pandemic has been a challenge for lots of us, but I seem to find that the pandemic has made technology companies realize uh, the importance of inclusion, right? And I think we have something here that we should take on and, and actually explode and uh, you know blow up so that we can actually make this dream of us of having accessible software as a service solutions available to all. The next slide, please. So I wanted to talk to you about how did we shift this needle. We shifted this needle by actually talking about inclusive culture, right? Everybody starts with talking about audits first, but it was important to start to talk about the culture of the organization, right? We needed to ensure that we were talking to them about building accessible technology and pushing the boundaries of inclusion because so many of these companies today are looking at you know, diversity and inclusion uh, indicators, uh, but yet disability and accessibility very often don't get counted in those indicators. So how can we shift that needle? So we started to realize that when we talk to uh, you know, people and culture or HR teams of organizations, we needed to talk about the people problem. We needed to talk about how do we include people in their organizations. We needed to talk about the processes. How are they onboarding people? What are their challenges? How can they ensure that people have the right kind of video conferences, conferencing systems available? Um, so we needed to talk about the processes. We needed to show them that if they made their products accessible and inclusive, they would get a wider customer base, right? And today I think uh, conferencing systems which have you know, incorporated closed captioning in them are a perfect example of that. And we need to blow that story up. And we need to talk about how these products have now been accepted and how people like me who might not otherwise need captions do have my captions on when I am actually in conferences like this because I get to experience the content a lot better. So we realized that we needed to talk about the customer, we needed to talk about the product, and we had to talk about how would they communicate this information to their customers as well as their internal stakeholders. We find that there is a huge gap in this inclusive culture cycle. Uh, people are doing one or the other, or sometimes not even one of these specific areas holistically. So we've got organizations who've reached out and said, we employ people with disabilities, but when you ask them how many of them, they're a company of 10,000 people and they have two people with disabilities that are accounted for. Right. And then you start to ask the question, so where did we go wrong? What can we do to increase that number? Are we asking the right questions? So the first thing that I would ask everybody before we even talk about audit standards and certification is let's solve for this problem. Let's solve for inclusive culture because that is will help us get to audit standards and certification as we go along. Next slide, please. Thank you. So we started talking about the accessibility roadmap next. Uh, every organization that we speak to generally first come to us and say, can you just do an audit of our product and just give us a certificate or a document says our product is accessible. So you have to actually tell them, take five steps back. Let's start with creating an accessibility vision for your organization. You would be shocked to know that there are so many companies who do not have a vision for their organization when it comes to accessibility. They have a diversity and inclusion vision, but within that, they don't have accessibility or one of the, the, you know, the key pillars that they need to look at. We need to go back and tell them that it's just not your website. It is every digital asset that you have. So many organizations would tell you, we don't even know how many digital assets we have. So help them take stock. If they've got a career website, <clears throat> can they make that accessible if they want to employ people with disabilities? So help them create a priority of their digital websites or their digital assets. 
what you will find is that there will be a priority grid that you will have to create, which will help them then decide that let's start with these applications and then let's go down or even take some of them on parallelly if they have the resources to do it. The next is something that is one of the biggest deterrents to audits and standards and certification, which is skills of resources, right? Uh, we actually did a small study within an organization where we sent out a survey asking their developers and their product team what their understanding of accessibility at the base level was. Simple questions, you know, color contrast, uh, you know, simple questions like, you know, how would you uh, just add an alternate text to an image, or even if they knew about that. And what we found that in the existing pool of technologists out there, less than 90 percent, less than 10 percent of them knew anything about accessibility, right? And less than two percent of them had even actually made something accessible. So a large number of our technologists have a challenge, which is why organizations like IAAP, which G3ICT, uh, you know, runs or manages, is very critical to increasing the skill set of people. After we've done that, we can start talking about audits. And if people don't have internal skill sets, they need to reach out to organize like Access Israel, Barrier Break, and others that can help them do this. So they get the right skill sets in place. If you don't have it, go bring it from some other organization so that you can deliver on your promise. Uh, which then leads us to, once I've got, got an audit done, I need to embed accessibility into my process, right? Very often it's just done once, it's never embedded, and then it's lost. So you'll find this amazing app that make, becomes accessible, and then the next time it becomes inaccessible. We need to shift Shelby, to well, that. Sorry about this, Shelby. Well, just write just another minute. Just to... Perfect. It's got exactly a minute to go. Uh, we've got VPAT after that, so let them create a VBAT for their product. And finally, they need to monitor their accessibility progress, right? So I think we need to do this full cycle for us to look at this. Next slide, please. And to Christopher's point, uh, you can get me at Shilpi underscore Kapoor on Twitter. And over to you. Great, well, Shilpi, Shilpi thank, you. thank you so much. And I'm going to pass back over to Christopher. Uh, thank you, Thomas. Okay, Shelby, that was excellent. Um, okay, so Wolf, um, Hart, um, Dreadback, and Doris Olsenberger, um, please come on. You're going to be talking to us a little bit about certification um, around comprehensive accessibility. Welcome to the stage. Wolf Hart? Yes. <laughs> Good afternoon, and thank you for the introduction. My colleague and I are happy to present you FAIR für alle, which basically is a certificate for accessibility of various services provided by companies. Next slide, please. The name of our project FAIR für alle translates like FAIR for all, and the certificate is a uniform one, which is valid all over Austria and supposed to implement accessibility systematically and holistically. Our intention is to reduce barriers step by step according to a universal design approach and in doing so to comply with the requirements of people with disabilities in particular. Involving experts representing persons with disabilities actively is a core feature of Fair für Alle. The certificate's main focus is on organizations which work as service providers for their customers and being awarded shows commitment to breaking down barriers and discrimination against people with disabilities. Our target group is very broad. Fair für alle is aimed at companies, organizations, districts, municipalities, and tourism regions alike, and it can be applied individually to organizations and subdivisions of any size and complexity. Next slide, please. As I said, we consider active involvement of people with disabilities extremely important, according to the principle, nothing about us without us, and therefore made it a core part of the Fair für Alle concept. The certificate is offered by 10 of the leading Austrian advocacy organizations of people with disabilities, 
representing over 400,000 people with disabilities. And the project is also supported by the Austrian Ministry of Social Affairs. There are three organizational units, the Certification Council, the Coordinating Body, and the Certification Body. Next slide, please. This slide shows a picture which gives you an overview of the organizations represented in the Fair für Alle Certification Council, which is the central body, and I'm currently the chair of this council. But I will now move on to the actual content of the Fair für Alle Certificate. Next slide, please. Fair für Alle certifies the degree of accessibility in a company or organization. It also addresses the willingness and intention to keep improving the status of accessibility. It is an individual certification, which means that, for instance, different sites are certified individually. Basically, the Fair für Alle certificate is awarded if the organization successfully complies with the following criteria. They are represented in a pretty detailed catalog of criteria developed by the Certification Council. The company must express its clear and binding commitment to accessibility in its corporate policy. Management needs to ensure that this policy is implemented and create awareness throughout the company. Employees need to know their resp responsibilities when it comes to accessibility and also be trained in meeting customers with disabilities. The ways of the company's communication, such as its website or printed materials and forms, need to be accessible and comprehensible. The company must have an adequate way of handling risks and legal issues in relation to accessibility and discrimination. A minimum standard of constructional conditions to ensure accessibility along the service chain must be provided and described in the access statement. And last but not least, the company must ensure development and steady improvement in terms of regular revisions and reassessment of the measures. Wolf, it's your turn. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Next slide. Okay. Next slide. Okay, thanks. Um, I will now give you a very short overview on how a Fair für Alles certification process works. So after getting to know the company and the people in charge, we um, together develop an individual consulting plan. This plan is divided um, into sessions along the criteria catalog. So we go through business processes, communication processes, um, customer journey, as well as construction requirements. We then analyze uh, the status of accessibility of the company and give inputs um, on how to improve the accessibility. Um, there's also a need for awareness trainings for executives, and um, the consulting sessions are a preparation for the audit. The audit normally takes um, about one day, and after that the company is certified. And the Fair für Alle label, is handed over, so you can, um, the label is um, shown on, on the slide here. A recertification is scheduled after three years, and normally a certification process takes about four to five months. Next slide, please. Okay, so what are the benefits um, of Fair für Alle? So firstly, um, Fair für Alle label shows um, people and customers with disabilities where to find accessible offers. It also shows which companies are committed to more accessibility. Secondly, companies can show their effort towards better um, accessibility for everybody. So these two parts are shown in the label, which is um, on the front door. It, it can be seen on the front door of the, of the company. Um, that's the, the obvious part. When you go, um, when you go down, um, to the roots um, in, the, uh, in the tree metaphor here, we see benefits that are uh, not so obvious in the first place. So Fair für alle certified organizations gain more awareness and knowledge on accessibility. This shall lead to a mindset toward more inclusion within the whole company. So in the long run, this will lead to a better service level for all, all customers. 
um, during a certification, um, business processes will be adapted to become more inclusive. And finally, our main goal is to always question the current um, status of accessibility and try to improve it step by step together with our partners. Um, next slide, please. When it comes to future plans and challenges, we see a demand for, um, a growing demand for certifications, which is good. Um, but therefore, we um, have a need for uh, qualified um, consultants, and we aim to become the label or the, a well-known label um, on certification for accessibility um, in Austria. Another challenge will be um, to always adapt our criteria in order to keep track with developments in society, in accessibility matters, and of course, um, when it comes to digital developments. So in the last two days, we've seen so many um, new and innovative projects and ideas yeah, it would be great to um, implement such ideas into our system, um, but this also yeah, would mean a lot of work, of course. So we aim to set up a long-term relationship with our partners in order to help companies and organizations to become more inclusive so they can and will <clears throat> offer more accessible services for everybody. So thanks a lot. That was a very brief um, overview on the Fair for Alle system. Next slide, please. Um, in case you have any question, you feel free to contact us at any time. Um, yeah, we're pleased to get in touch with you. Thank Great. You. Thank you very much, Doris. Thank you very much, Wolfhard. And um, back over to you, Christopher. Well, thank you, Thomas. Uh, that was excellent. Uh, there's many other questions I have for, for Doris and Wolfhard, especially around um, you know, the maintaining of the certification and um, the subject matter experts that are used. It's a big, big project that you're undertaking. So congratulations for the, the great work. It's it's so needed. Um, um, so the, our next our next um, guest um, here is Jonathan Hassel. Um, of, um, he's the founder of Hassel um, Inclusive. And Jonathan, it's been a long time. I'm looking forward to hearing you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, it's great to, uh, great to see you on the screen, if not in the room. Uh, if we could have the slides, please, that would be great. Wonderful. Uh, and if we could go to the next slide. It's been 20 years since the first accessibility guidelines were created, and we've succeeded in uh, making 2% of the world's websites accessible. 2%. Every one of us, next slide, We'll know someone who's impacted like this, like my mum who had to start online shopping in the pandemic with her failing eyesight. What would it take to actually get it right? Not just once, but across all of our digital communications and win against our business goals while doing it. We need a change in mindset. Accessibility is for everyone, we all agree on that. We just need a better way of getting it done. Next slide. Next slide. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jonathan Hassel, and I've been working to make accessibility happen for 20 years. Uh, first at the BBC in the UK, then founding Hassel Inclusion uh, to help organizations all over the world get good at this. Um, I'm the lead author of the standard I'm going to talk to you about today, ISO 30071 Part 1, the international standard that summarizes my experience and a lot of other people's experience into a blueprint for all to use. Next slide. That's important because meeting coding standards is just not enough. Yes, 98% of websites aren't fully WCAG compliant, but people care about the experience first. And as uh, Shilpi was saying as well, it's not just about the 20% of people with disabilities or the 20% of older people who also need accessibility. It's actually all of us. Just one example. Have you ever tried watching Netflix on a plane or train? It's too noisy. What is the answer? Turn the captions on. You may not have a disability around hearing, but you're in a noisy place, and so that enables you to have what you want. We all want digital experiences to be consistently good. 
to deliver consistently good experiences. Next slide. Requires organizations to mature in accessibility, embedding it in the way they work, as we've seen in some of the models that you've seen, across people, processes, and training for, uh, for everybody in the organization, and their governance and metrics for success. People need a clear, budgeted, strategic roadmap to make accessibility happen. Uh, and that's why I spent time putting that roadmap together in ISO 30071 part one. Next slide. So, um, you can see we've had a number of models um, in India, um, in, in Austria, about organizations trying to take this forwards. That's because people don't like reading ISO standards because they're very long. So here is the, uh, in a nutshell, version, something we call the hassle inclusion why. Um, the key thing that I've, I've seen missing from, from people's slides uh, so far is the first place we start, which is expand awareness. What do organizations have to win from this? Uh, because not understanding the benefits means not enough buy-in, and not enough buy-in means it doesn't work. And that buy-in can come from all over the company, not just the CEO, but heads of R&D, diversity and inclusion, people who are working in testing, all of them need to know what they can win. In bad strategy, that's the, ne the next part of things, how to get this in your policies, your processes, the sort of things that Shilpi was talking about in terms of assessing staff capability. Enable process. There is a good and bad way of getting this into your software development lifecycle process. Um, there is a really efficient model in the standard to do that. And the last two things are absolutely crucial. Measure effects. This is saying, okay, we're now good at this, so what happened? Did we win? Actually, are we going to continue doing this or are we going to fall away from that certification because we spent loads of money on it and we don't think it necessarily actually delivered on its promise? That's what you can't allow to happen. That's uh, measure effects. And then continually involve is to make sure, as some of my colleagues up here were saying, um, that everything keeps up to date with what's happening in industry. Um, we may all be doing all of this in the metaverse in the future. How do we make that accessible? That's continually evolve. Next slide, please. So we've been benchmarking organizations in this internationally for years. Um, uh, some of the things that people have been talking about, so we're looking at awareness of people and, and policies, uh, their capability, um, uh, assessments of the results, what's actually coming out of this. Um, we find strengths and gaps, um, and we then create bespoke plans for organizations so they can get as good as the sorts of Googles, Microsofts, and Yahoos you've seen on this platform uh, on, on Wednesday. Uh, next slide, please. But not everybody can afford our services, so we wanted to make this available for all. And so we created the Digital Accessibility Maturity Scorecard. This is a free tool um, that will enable an organization to get a benchmark, uh, a self-certified one at least, uh, against our standard in 15 minutes online. Um, so, this free scorecard is really important because people don't want to read those big long standards um, and this helps them get an idea of where they're at and specifically maybe some of the places where they could go next to improve their score. Next slide. So that's so important because the 350 organizations who've been filling this in recently, um, uh, the average score um, of them was 25% of what they would need to get to the international best practice. Um, what that means is that people aren't getting the best out of the standard. Um, and we want to change that. Um, so it's really important uh, and it's really great to hear that when people see um, the scorecard and they see the things that they should be doing and could be doing and maybe aren't doing yet, they have a roadmap for where they could go. That's changing people's behavior from complacency to action. Another thing that's changing behaviors 
uh, is where governments actually get behind standards like the international standard that we have. That happened in the UK last year, and the whole of the marketing industry who didn't think that accessibility applied to them at all because they don't do websites had to change overnight. So, um, the change that we dream is this. Next slide, please. Next slide. Um, that organizations would turn their diversity and inclusion talk into action using the international standard. We want them to get to excellent customer experiences for all of their customers, increasing revenue, and reducing customer service costs, all while meeting the legal requirements that they're currently failing to meet. Next slide. Next slide. For this to create real-world impact, we need organizations to use things like the scorecard to benchmark, plan, and track their accessibility maturity. Governments to only procure from companies with a roadmap to accessibility maturity. Regulators to demand progress on the roadmaps from the companies that they regulate. And publicly listed companies to report on their progress annually. Next slide, please. Jonathan, we just have a, a, a minute. This is Christopher. Thank you. So I'd like you to join us uh, in this, in making accessibility happen. If you're influencing governments, help us lobby for this standard to be part of what they require. Um, if you haven't tried the scorecard yet, um, uh, the uh, web address is on the screen there. Um, we'd love you to try it and tell us uh, what you think about it. Does it give you, uh, the people who are trying to implement accessibility in your organizations, what you need? And if you're an accessibility organization who try and help um, companies actually get better at this, this is a great tool to know where they are at right now. Um, so you can use this to get a better idea of where people are at and how to take them forward. If you don't have the services to be able to help them do that, we can help them you with those as well. We can license the sort of things that we've been doing in all sorts of places all over the world for years. So contact me. Uh, Jonathan at hassleinclusion.com. There's a QR code uh, on the screen there as well. Um, and I'd love to have a chat to see how we could land this uh, in the country where you are. Together, we can make accessibility happen. Thank you very much. Great. Jonathan, thank you very much indeed. And um, back over to you, Christopher. No, thank you, Thomas. That was excellent, Jonathan. So <coughs> much impact there. <laughs> There's a lot there, especially you didn't get into the roadmap aspect of it. I, I look forward to learning more about, um, about the work visiting the site. Um, our next guest is a colleague friend, um, Yuval Wagner. He is with Access Israel. Needs no introduction. Yuval, it's all you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Yuval Wagner. I'm a white man, bald brown eyes, I'm a, I'm a disabled person using a wheelchair and wearing a green uh, jacket. Um, so thank you for uh, being aboard in this amazing panel and after other amazing, amazing model. So next slide, please. So, um, in Israel, we have uh, already laws, regulations, and accessibility standards that are very progressed. And so we are a pretty, um, we have a lot of experience in actually implementing accessibility. And uh, we believe that the, the way to achieve uh, accessibility is in three parallel uh, uh, ways, which is uh, awareness, legislation, and models like we saw and see in this panel. And I will talk about another model. Next, please. Next slide, please. Next. OK. Uh, in any way, in, in each country, they have various kinds of organizations 
that we need them to be accessible and fully accessible in order to improve accessibility inclusion, which is government ministries and agencies, municipalities, businesses, and nonprofits, big nonprofits like hospitals and universities. And in order to convince them to actually uh, 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 do that, this is the, our main challenge. How do we convince them? So if you have laws and regulations that have to do it, it's a, a way, it's, a, it's much easier, like in Israel. But in other countries, you have to convince them in another way. And, uh, and what we uh, did in Israel before we had the legislation, the, con the convincement was based on a business model that we called it accessible business equal profitable business. But when you have when you have legislation, it's of course much easier. But after you already convince them, then you know working on with a large organization, it's how you take this very complex a uh, uh, thing of implementing, and how do you make it simple? And this is what we have done in our model. We took the big thing of making inclusive accessible organizations for all disabilities, and we simplified it into a very simple implemented model. Next slide, please. Slide, please. Slide, please. Um, so um, when we consult an uh, organization on the journey to be fully accessible, we talk about the physical accessibility, the culture of the organization, the services, of the organization, the technologies, and the employment. And if we, we make all of these sectors accessible, then you have what we call accessible organization. Next slide, please. So the, the method that we are doing is, our first stage is presentation to the management, to the CEO, and all his city on, on and all his all the managers of the organ on, on of the organization, they must be aware. We talked about awareness. It's awareness of the managers first, and they have to get decisions to actually make it happen. When they make this decision, you can go to the next sta the stage, which is to define one of the management team to be the leader of this mission of making the organization accessible. Then you have to define another leader, which is the accessibility director. Actually, this is the project manager of making the organization accessible. The next thing we do, we make a board of representative from all various a, a, a department of the organization, which is which consists the accessibility board, and they meet once every quarter or once every two months, depends on the organization. And then we do the audit, accessibility gap audit. We have different audits to different kind of organization depending on what they do. It's very uh, uh, precise and detailed audits. But it's you know we already have audits for all kind of areas of organization, and after we have the audits, then we can make a work plan and the budget to go to the next stage, which is actually consulting on what to do and up to, and what to do in order to make it accessible and to implement the right way. Um, we also do working with the organization with the target market of people with disabilities, the clients with disabilities. We use people with disabilities in our audits, which is another way of thinking, not only by, by uh, consulting, by ex consulting experts like the IA IAAP experts, but also have the feedback from actual uh, people with disabilities. And very important when you finish get close to the finishing is advertising all the accessibility services to the clients. I'm as a person with disability, when I want to engage a company 
that I don't know, I want to very easily find out how accessible are them? How can I enjoy all the accessibility efforts that they already had done? And, and, and at the end, we do a ceremony giving, them the, giving the organization the badge. And that's not finished. Next slide, please. In the organization, I just showing this uh, um, in this slide where you can see like uh, different circles in different colors to show the different departments that we work with in the organization. It's only the basic one, but not all. The building, the employees training, the call center, the tech, the the website application and ATMs, the information, the events and the employment, the HR. So we work with all departments on the on the on, on our way. Next slide, please. And uh, what's uh, what's beautiful to see is that we're doing this already for 20 years. We're actually doing it, in fact. And most Israeli companies are already fully accessible by this model. And we're very proud to join to the Valuable 500. And more than four, about 40 companies, Israeli global companies, are in the Valuable 500, but in the status that are already fully accessible, both in the giving services and in the inclusive employment of people with uh, disabilities. Um, just, just, um, if you could just wrap it up very close. Last, last slide. Okay, thank you. Last slide, please. So um, the after doing that, as, as others models show too, this is not enough. This is the first stage of doing it. And you go next, and the next stage is actually maintenance and excellence and updates. It's a never ending last mission. And you have to uh, continue uh, uh, working with that uh, always. And, and lastly, um, we are now looking to the future uh, we both uh, also started to work internationally and we are giving consulting uh, um, services by this model to global companies. So if next slide. So if you're interested, just contact us and uh, we would love to share the information, partnership and consultancy services by us. Thank you very much, Christopher. Yuval, thank you very much indeed. And Christopher, could I please, we don't have any time for questions, but if I could turn it over to you to sum up and uh, add your thanks to, my thanks to everybody here, including the signers, but I'll let you um, summarize everything. Wow, thank you, Thomas, and thank you for all the work that you've done on this, and thank you to the panel. It was excellent, I learned a lot. There were, if I could grab everyone and just, after, if I was there and take you all out to lunch and just to have all your brains in one place, because there were so many common themes throughout this. I mean, there was communication, you know, stepping back, you know, talking to the company, dealing with the leadership aspect with these organizations. It's, but one of the things that came out through all the presentations to me, the theme was make it simple. Don't make it complicated and let there be some quick wins along the way for these organizations um, instead of getting into the weeds. And that was something that just kept bubbling up throughout everyone's presentation. So again, I, I wish I had y'all all in one place and I could just see the, the steam coming off everyone's head about all the great ideas. So thank you very much. Thank you to the Zero Project team. Thank you to the sign language interpreters and captionists. You all are doing an amazing job and I look forward to seeing you all there next year. Thank you very much indeed, Christopher, and my thanks to everybody once again, virtually and here, technicians, captioners, and signers, and signing off now. Bye-bye. Bye, Yuval. Bye, Shelby. Hey, Christopher.